Hello, I'm Reverend Kenny Callahan, the pastor of Metropolitan Community Church of Richmond. The sacred text for this Sunday service is taken from Matthew's story, the 22nd chapter, verses 34 to 40. Have you ever considered or wondered what the purpose is of God's law and why is God's law important? Or when you think of God, what kind of picture comes to your mind? Sometimes our generic picture of God is one of a harsh ruler, a rule enforcer, a controlling dictator who sits up in the skies, making sure that nobody has too much fun or thinks of themselves as worthy of any sense of love and kindness. And when you read the list of other laws, regardless if it's the Ten Commandments or one of the notorious lists of laws from the book of Leviticus or some other place in the Bible, this incredibly negative impression is only reinforced and confirmed. With this understanding of the law, it is difficult, I would say even impossible, to imagine God as being caring or kind at all, let alone loving. But here's the deal. When Jesus is asked which of the more than 600 laws in the Bible is the greatest and most important, Jesus boils them down to two, neither of which is about behavior, but instead about relationship. Specifically, Jesus says loving God is the first thing, the most important and the greatest thing, and it is combined with to love God means that you also love God's people, which means your neighbor and yourself. By connecting these two, I believe that Jesus is saying you cannot really be in right relationship with God without being in right relationship with self and one another. In other words, you cannot fully love God unless you also love God's people. And remember that God calls each and every one of us beloved. The ancient rabbis put it this way, what is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. This is the whole law. Part of what Jesus is telling us is, you can't love your neighbor unless you also love yourself. Meaning, when you have a healthy sense of your own worth and dignity, then and only then can you more easily treat others with dignity and respect as well. And when you do this, you love God. Put in yet another way, I believe that you cannot give away a gift that you do not have. This way of loving God can sound odd to people who imagine God primarily as a dominating ruler. But don't rulers want to, uh, our complete devotion, our loyalty, our dependence and praise? But what would happen if we d dared to take the risk of imagining a different image of God?